You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Who, who is the true church and who is not the true church? You got to line up that leader with the Holy Scriptures. And if that leader vacillates or turns away from, in the slightest degree, from the Holy Scriptures, then that is Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give God all the praise, honor, and the glory for truly is worthy to be praised. I give all honor to our blessed one, the prophet of the Lord, Prophet H. Walker. I give all honor to his blessed, beautiful helpmate, First Elect Lady Walker. Honor to what honor is due in the household of faith and pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give all glory, honor, and praises to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, truly is the head of my life. I give double infinite honors to his truly kind apostle and prophet, Bishop H. Prophet Walker, and first elect Lady Mother Walker, faithfully by his side. I give due honors to whom honors are due. I greet all the household of faith with the love and admiration in Jesus' name. And we're presenting to you the bells of joy singing one day at a time. <coughs> One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today. Show me a way. One day at a time. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. That is all. to be 
receive words from Prophet H. Walker. Discussing a scripture text that uh, can prove beyond a doubt that uh, there is a true church and there is a false church. Now, the false church is clearly identified, but I think I got a, a praise report I want to share at this time. And uh, while the evangelist is reading the praise report, uh, we're going to ask uh, uh, Elder Lansing, Elder Marshall. Elder Brooks and Elder Kevin to come up and be a part of this uh, panel. And our text is going to be from uh, 1 Timothy, rather 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 1 through 5. Uh, before that, uh, we're going to have Evangelist Jackie to read a praise report. Praise the Lord, Prophet. I was on YouTube earlier today and happened to stumble across your preaching and taking a stand for the apostolic truth. Your words are not enticing, but full of truth and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I am from South Carolina, and I am 27 years old. I've never heard the Word of God preached like this before. I am also a member of the PAW and have wondered why some churches believe in one thing and some in another. It's very confusing. Thank you so much for teaching the truth. Many young ministers, as myself, need to sit under teachings as this. Thank you for defending the faith. Yes, Amen. God. Praise God. All right. Amen. So we're going to help that uh, that uh, young minister out a little bit and explain to him. Uh, uh, I had four and a moderator. Uh, we're going to ask Brother uh, Thomas to come and, and be the moderator. Amen. 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 Uh, in the text from 1 Timothy, or rather 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 2, here uh, Paul gives an explicit instruction uh, concerning a church uh, guidance and a church direction. Amen. If you take notice in chapter 2 from verse 1, 
Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, you're in the dispensation of grace, but you have to be strong. You, you have to have some kind of backbone. You've got to have some kind of courage that you can stand up against these false churches that have magnified themselves so much. Uh, brothers and sisters, it is very, very dangerous to be a part of false religion. And the only way that you can prove who is the true church and who is not the true church, you've got to line up that leader with the Holy Scriptures. And if that leader vacillates or turns away from, in the slightest degree, from the Holy Scriptures, then that is a false church. Amen. And those who attend a false church, you know, a lot of times, uh, uh, I used to blame it on the leadership, but, but really, it, it's the individual. Because anyone who's seeking after truth will find truth, and especially more so as we come closer to the final moments of this last dispensation of time and this is the last dispensation this is the final days and as we approach closer to that God has allowed YouTube to be an evidence amen. and I don't know how long we're going to be on it but amen we're going to be on it until the Lord sees fit amen to take us down and the only way he takes us down because there's so much unbelief that we are not appreciated then the Bible says he'll remove himself amen from those who will not follow the pathway amen. of righteousness as instructed by a leader now, amen, I know what I'm saying is true. Right, the scripture says for a long time Israel was without a, a teaching priest and the, and the true God. But when they in their trouble did turn to the Lord, he was heard of them. So, again, uh, a lot of people are turning away, but there yet is a few who still want to embrace the pathway of righteousness. Uh, pick up in verse uh, 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, I, I'm saying to that young minister, now you are in a false church. Now, the Bible says the truth is to be committed to faithful men. Now, if you are faithful, you can't be around those who are not faithful. Yes, Lord, and denominations does not make you faithful. Uh, God, I said last week, and often, God never created denominations. Right. He never created divisions. This comes from mankind and not God. God had one church and he had one faith. Uh, how does it go? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One faith means one church. Amen. One teaching. One doctrine. Amen. So we have to understand when you're caught up in false religion, it'll be pointed out to you. But the decision that you make when you know you're in false religion, that decision rests solely with the individual. Uh, 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 connect me with verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Amen. A man cannot be crowned, and that crown is eternal life, except he strive lawfully. And that is the Bible way. Note in that tablet right in the book that it might be for the time to come forever Amen. and ever. So again, we thank the Lord for this panel. Uh, our moderator, uh, our Brother Thomas, is going to introduce the panel from his left to his right. Praise the Lord. 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 This is the panel for the night. Amen. On my left, you have Elder Marshall, Elder Lanson. To my right, you have Elder Brooks, and Elder Kevin. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to start. In 2 Timothy, the second chapter, 1 through 5. Amen. Um, Hallelujah. We're going to start with the Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, that church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for being a mighty good God and truly He's worthy to be praised. And I thank God to be found in the house of the Lord where the Spirit is. And I believe the Bible says where the Spirit is, there's liberty. 
First of all, I'd like to give, uh, start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is truly the head of my life. I give double and all honor to our great high standing prophet of the Lord, Prophet Bishop H. Walker, Amen. his beautiful, lovely helpmate, and all the saints of God. And I thank God for the uh, blessed uh, panel. Thank God for the word of truth. And like the Bible says, it's the truth that sets the captive free. You know, you can't be uh, saved, you know, and... Um, uh, you can't be saved with a lie, you know. Uh, a, 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 a lie don't do nothing for you, you know. The Bible says a liar shall, in, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're going to be saved, you have to uh, come through uh, the holiness way, the Bible way. And I'm going to uh, jump in at uh, 2 Timothy, the uh, second chapter. And I'm going to pick up at... Uh, uh, I'm going to pick up at uh, verse 1, and it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. And uh, like the prophet brought out uh, forth, you know, for one thing, there's no weakness in Christ. Amen. I believe the Bible said, let the weak say I'm strong, Amen. you know, and uh, 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 if you're going to be a soldier in the army of the Lord, you, you, uh, you have to be faithful. You know, God is not looking for part-time soldiers, you know. The Bible says he'd rather that you be hot or cold. If you be lukewarm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. You know, so God don't have nobody, don't have time for nobody that want to serve him one day and don't want to serve him the next, you know, on fire for the Lord one day and then uh, uh, discourage the next day. And verse uh, 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier, and number four, uh, verse 4, no man that entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And this is really where I want to key in. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. You got to do it according to the scriptures, you know. If the apostles or the prophets didn't teach it, then we can't teach it, you know. Just like the veil covering uh, in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter you go to churches and see churches all the time where women don't have a veil covering on. But it's Bible, you know. So how are you going to take away from, from the scriptures and have your sisters without a veil covering, you know. But it's not a, a, a church according to godliness, you know. You have a, a true preachers and you have false preachers, you know. You have some that God sent and you have others that sent themselves, you know. And the Bible says turn away from them. So I thank God uh, for this blessed panel. Thank God for the word of truth and pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh praise the Lord there, church. Oh. We're having a great time. I said praise the Lord, church. Oh. Amen. I thank God for this wonderful time in God's house. This is the house of prayer. Amen. Amen. We're not like the false church. This is not a social club. Amen. Amen. We come here to get the victory. Get a healing, hear a word from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And with that, I give all glory, honor, and praise to Jesus Christ, who is the most high God. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says he is the highest. Yeah. Amen. And all honor to our prophet yeah. and Bishop H. Walker, yeah. soldier on the battlefield. Yeah. Amen. To all my brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in that precious name. Yeah. Amen. I thank God uh, for the text today because we all are soldiers for Christ. And we have a role model in prophet, amen. amen, who encourages us to get out there on the highways and the byways, amen. You wouldn't see T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar out there on the street corner preaching, amen, because they're not trying to preach to save a lost soul, yeah. but they're preaching for money. Of course, we know that, amen. And in our text, 2 Timothy, the second chapter, it tells us, as I paraphrase a bit, that uh, to commit these things to, to faithful men. Amen. And we've been faithful. A lot of us have left away from family members. We've left away from different countries, different states, different careers. Someone like Abraham. And we did all this by faith. Amen. And that we believe what prophet was teaching. Amen. Because why? Not just we believe him. Uh, we had to line him up with what the apostles taught. Amen. All you got to do is look at these churches nowadays. You don't see many churches where women are actually wearing the veil covering. And that shows a lot about a woman's heart. All right. to, to, to able to wear a veil covering when it's, it's not popular in the world today. 
to show that she sold out for Jesus yes. in the Holy Scriptures, according to 1 Corinthians in the 11th chapter. Amen. It says, verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. We endure hardness. So it's, it's, it's not just, we haven't been called into just ice cream and Kool-Aid, but we've also been called to suffer for Christ. Amen. This holiness walk is about suffering, going out, going without loved ones or, or having a lot of money or, or this or that. It's not about a comfort zone, but we're actually called to suffer for Christ. At the end of the day, you got to understand what he did for you on Calvary's cross. Amen. How they beat him, spit on him, nailed him to a cross. He did all that for you because he loved you. Why? Because he created you. Amen. Jesus Christ is the creator. Amen. And I thank God for that. I was very impressed most recently by the young panel that we had. The young women wearing their head veil. Amen. I believe over there in 2 Timothy, uh, the second chapter also, it says, verse 22, it says, Flee also youthful, youthful lusts. Those are youthful desires that you have in your youth. But follow righteousness. Amen. They made a, a, a decision to follow after holiness, after righteousness. Uh, 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 it says, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. They made a decision. I believe on the very same day that they gave that wonderful panel of the young people, did you know that they had a, a, a fire in Brazil at a nightclub? And I believe over 230 Three young people Amen. were killed in this fire. Yes. And you know what they do at the nightclub. Amen. They drink, they drug, they grind on one another. Amen. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. 200, over 233 young people between the ages of 16 and 20, they died. Amen. And they died unholy. They died unrighteous. And the Bible says that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. They can't make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. This happened in Brazil. Amen. But we had holiness women yeah. up here preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. And they are being an example to the believers by word and by conduct and by their holy life and their lifestyle. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord, you like. Praise the Lord, you like. Giving our honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Give a double honor to our prophet, Prophet H. Walker, Amen. and the elect lady, Mother Walker. Amen. Give it an honor that is due today. Those that are viewing on well YouTube, yeah. we are in very dangerous times. These times are very, very wicked. Yeah. And it's very important that we be in the holiness place in this last dispensation of time. Yeah. And we got to be in the right place and at the right time. Yeah. And I thank God for True Light and Prophet H. Walker. You know, we... Yeah. You, you got to repent from your sins and come into the True Holiness Church. Like I stated to this uh, young gentleman on my job yesterday, Jesus is our only escape. They destroyed the labor unions. He, he was discussing me about he worked it like over 60 hours. Supposed to be getting paid $700. Ended up getting paid 500 some dollars. So he basically breaking his neck for no reason. And these are the times that we're in simply because America has rejected God. And America only reject God so much before God turns his back on them. And when God turns his back, all type of destruction happens. But I'm here to let you know there is a holiness place. That's, that place of protection. I believe the Bible says flee unto the mountains. That mountain represents the place of protection. That's our only hope. We got to be covered by the blood of Jesus in this last dispensation of time. And I want to go to the text, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now, this is concerning the calling that God has placed on our lives as soldiers. He called us to be soldiers. He didn't call us to be cowards. He, he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power yeah. to step yeah. on serpents and to rebuke devils and, you know, to, to preach to the people, to bring them in the true holiness church before it's everlasting too late. Amen. Now, Paul wrote a letter to his son in the faith, Timothy, and it states in verse 1 of chapter 2, it said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's letting them know these times are very wicked, even though all the destruction is, every, you see it everywhere. Sodomites and lesbians, uh, people compromising. Be strong in this last dispensation of time because 
if you hold on at the end, you will inherit the kingdom of God. And it states here, it said, And the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who which be able to teach others also. Again, I thank God for our prophet, Prophet H. Walker, that teaches us how to be strong and how to be faithful soldiers in this last dispensation of time. And that's what's going to be required to be, be saved. Paul said, Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine. The obedience to the word of God is what's going to determine from the true church and the false churches. And of course, you see on web television, all the false churches that you see on television, you see, of course, your, your Joel Steins and your T.D. Jakes and Joyce Myers preaching for popularity, preaching for their own selves. Matter of fact, the Bible states they serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. You got sodomite so-called bishops. You got lesbian uh, pastors. Where does this come from? It didn't come from God. It came from man. And just like, matter of fact, let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Let's bring this out real quick. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 21, it clearly states that I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from the evil way and from the evil of their doings. Amen. Now, if you got all, if they was of the true church, they would teach the truth. Because the truth of the word of God is what establishes the Amen. true church through obedience. Yeah. You got all these false churches with women painted up, painted lips, painted fingernails, wearing pants and stilettos, and not wearing no head cover. You got people in the church shacking up, fornicating, drinking, doing whatever they want to do. Matter of fact, I met a guy on the job today said he was a born again Christian. But maybe about maybe a few a couple of minutes later I hear him say a cussing word. But that's just to show the falseness of leadership. Yeah. The leadership is false, the leadership is blind, and yeah. Jesus gave a warning concerning blind leaders. You shall not follow blind leaders because you will fall in a ditch. So leadership, true preachers are very important in this last dispensation of time because that's what's going to establish the true church. The church ain't gonna do no more than what the preacher tell them to do. Amen. So just keep in mind it's time to repent and obey holiness yeah. and follow after God's final prophet, Prophet H. Walker, because he's the only prophet that's teaching the true word of God. Now holiness is not popular. It's not about being popular. It's about obedience to the word of God. And take that to heart. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, man. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's had my life. Double honor, all honor to our great affiliate, the Apostle, Prophet Bishop H. Walker, beloved elect lady Mother Walker, and Prophet Walker is God's last messenger, the last prophet teacher, the truth of God's word, and many people try to criticize, but you can criticize if you want to, but he got a mandate and a testimony from God, amen. So I'm going to follow the prophet of God. You got problems following people, but you follow Al Sharpton, you follow... Jesse Jackson, a man with two families. Amen. You follow Obama, who believes in same-sex marriage and baby murder. All of them are abominations against the Lord. I'm going to follow the man of God, who I know by his record and his doctrine and his quiet character. They truly is set not only lead true life, but all that should be saved. Amen. And I give honor to the True Life Church and honor where honor is due to the YouTube family. And I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to a faithful man who shall be able to teach others also. And I like verse 5. If a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Everything has to be legal. And God protected his word by an apostolic curse through the Apostle Paul in Galatians Chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. If any man teach anything other than what the apostles taught you, they are cursed, which means that they are going to hell, to a lake of fire. Paul is not here today, but Prophet Walker is here today, man. He's a latter day apostle and prophet. Everything is legal. And many people, they, they crying and fighting, arguing over guns because they say it's in the Second Amendment. But what about God's amendment, man? A, a gun ain't going to protect you. Jesus is going to protect you. The word of God and having the Holy Ghost is the only thing that's going to protect you. And I thank God for being 
and true holiness. You know, that's such a falling away in the church today. And uh, you see it, the women don't wear the veil covering, amen. Uh, the women want to wear pants. You got sodomites and lesbians in churches. And uh, you got a so-called sodomite bishop, O.C. Allen, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And him and his so-called husband call himself first gentleman. No, you the first sissy. They try to adopt a little baby girl. And, and now what kind of trust my little girl have with two daddies when you're supposed to have a mama and a daddy? And who would go to that church? And I believe they call themselves Pentecostal. Well, True Light is a Pentecost church. We baptize in Jesus' name. We teach the Holy Ghost. And you don't got the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God doesn't dwell in an unclean temple. And there's nothing more unclean than a sodomite or a lesbian. But if preachers are afraid to stand up for the Word of God, and it's another pastor, I believe his name is uh, Tolton. Uh, in New York, he got uh, another Pentecostal so-called preacher. He said uh, his motto is gay by God. First of all, gay means happy. And you're not gay by God. You are a, a sodomite by Satan, amen, or a sissy by Satan, whichever one you prefer. And these people claim to have the Holy Ghost. That's why everybody don't, don't speak in tongues. Y'all learn that from Juanita Bynum. She can shock them or rock them with the best of them. But it's not about speaking in tongues. Your life, your character, your fruits will show whether or not you truly are saved. Now, there's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. But like the prophet said, you speak in tongues, they have on lipstick. They speak in tongues, they drink in liquor. They speak in tongues, they at the bar. It's not about speaking in tongues. If you got the Holy Ghost, it will show in you and in your pastor. And uh, I just want to mention about the Boy Scouts. Now, you know, uh, they said last year they go uh, stand up against this sodomite and lesbian movement. But it didn't take six months for them to cave in. So they're supposed to be making an announcement next week. Now, they got a long-standing tradition of not allowing open homosexuals to be in the Boy Scouts or atheists. Now, they're going to let each chapter decide whether or not you want to have sodomites there. So you're going to let sodomites be around little boys, touch on them, feel them, raping them, out in the woods, you don't know what they're doing. And this organization is mainly supported by the Mormons and the Catholic Church. Well, you know what the Catholic Church like to do with little boys. But I thank God for true light, man. We are the only thing left, like Proverbs said, we are the only sane, holy church left. Whenever you, and, and, well, we're not going to let atheists in, but we're going to let sodomites. Sodomites and lesbians are the biggest atheists in the world. <laughs> you know you don't believe in God when you, a man sleeps with another man or a woman sleeps with another woman, Christian America, you need to take notice of Prophet Walker and True Life Pentecost Church of the holiness message that we are trying to spread because the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise we definitely have a good time tonight. Amen. Um, Amen. Um, giving all honor to God. I'm double honor to Parvage Walker, Mother and Lady Walker. Um, giving all honor where honor is due tonight, and like the elders was bringing out, um, we are living in some very wicked times. Um, you have all type of things that's going on in this world today. Uh, sodomites, you got lesbians, you got people that's pretty much just turning their backs away from God. And, um, you know, when He's the truth and the light. Um, it's just so much things that's going on that even the uh, the, the animals kind of feeling it because did you know that in Africa there's a lion by the name of I'm not sure what her name was but she's growing a man and she's having the same characteristics of a male so all the females are going or gravitating towards her like she's a male so it just goes to show you how even in nature it can exhibit the same things that, are, that can go on in human nature. So, therefore, I say, you know, we have a, a prophet that we really need to follow, that America should be trying to listen to, you know, because he does, he does it the right way. You know, he, he follows the Bible, goes by the doctrine, tells you exactly what you need to do in order to uh, see Jesus in peace one day. And uh, we're going to start back to my right with uh, Edda Brooks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Man, thank God for the panel. Thank God the, uh, for the truth that's uh, going forth. And like the Bible says, the time will, uh, will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap to themselves teachers having the itchy ear message. And it's like, you know, that's what people love today. You know, instead of um, people... Um, 
so-called seeking after the truth they want to be saved they want to gravitate you know to the uh, td jakes to the benny hens you know but that's not what's going to save your soul Amen. and i'm gonna jump in uh first timothy uh the first chapter uh at verse six they say wherefore well, i put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift which is in thee by the putting on of my hands and uh, he was he, he trying to let you know, you know, if you save, you know, you got something in you, you know, uh, 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 a person cannot be saved with have, without having God's spirit. That's why uh, uh, the Bible says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You cannot be saved without the Holy Ghost. And like one of the preachers brought forth, if you have the Holy Ghost, it has to be exemplified in your life. You know, you can't say you have the Holy Ghost and you fornicating and you drinking. You know, a, 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 a person do that prior to salvation. So if you're doing the same thing, then you're not showing uh, for fruit that you are saved. Actually, you're showing fruit for fruit that you're not saved. In verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, that's why, like the Bible says, you know, we cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, we got to stand up and preach. And we have to tear down these sodomites and these lesbians. And now we're in a day and time where they want to uplift uh, 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 the sodomite and the lesbians, you know, and want to try to tear down the true church of God. But the Bible says the gates of hell should not prevail over the true church of God. You know, uh, 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 it don't matter how many are in God's church. His word is still true. And that's why, like the Bible said, let God be true. And every man a liar. You have to, uh, 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 the, uh, the Bible is not uh, meant uh, 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 to be changed. You know, uh, the Bible is to change you. We're not supposed to change the word of God, you know. And no man have the right to change the word of God. And like was brought forth, that's why we so blessed. And thank God every day for our prophet, you know, because he labors in the word and the doctrine. And like he uh, uh, brought up, I believe, last week, unless you come up under the umbrella of the true light, you cannot be saved, you know. Uh, you cannot be saved up under false leadership, you know. Uh, 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 and all these uh, false preachers and teachers want to do is just take your money. Like prop prophet said, they are uh, 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 pimps in the pulpit. That's all they are, you know. They don't care nothing about your soul. Only thing they do is care about how much money they can get in that basket for materialistic things, for their children and their grandchildren. But what about the saving of a soul, yes, you know? Yes. The Bible says if any man strive for mastery, yet he's not crowned except he strive lawfully. You got to do it by the word of God. So I thank God for true life. For God we live and for God we gonna die. I pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord again, church. The Lord. Amen. We're having a great time in God's house. Amen. I thank you for all these. Uh, I'm so thankful for these words of knowledge from the elders thus far. Amen. And uh, what I want to get into is uh, kind of convey to the people that uh, here at True Light, you know, uh, we dislike Obama. We hate Obama for the right reasons. Amen. Don't don't hate him for the wrong reasons. Don't hate him because he's black. Amen. Or don't hate him because his mama's white. Amen. Don't hate him for that either. Yes. Amen. Amen. We hate him because he's the first ever president at in inauguration to mention about sodomites and lesbians. First ever president. Amen. We hate him because he thinks he's some false messiah and has this false messiah complex. Amen. I believe just recently he was on the cover of Newsweek. And it shows his face and it says the second coming. That's why we hate him. Amen. It's been brought out that he is an antichrist. He is the beast. That's why we hate him. We hate him because he favors Islam and supports Islamic rebels. And you see all the destruction in the Middle East today. They're still riding in, in Egypt and not happy with their present dictator. That's Obama's boy. He supported the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why we hate Obama. Amen. Not for the wrong reasons, but for the right reasons. Yes. Amen. Because yes. he's like Hitler or, or any other uh, uh, communist leader who wants to take uh, uh, control from the people and establish it himself. Amen. That's why we hate him. We hate him because he's a, a drone president who sent out drones 
and kill families, kill innocent children in Pakistan. There's so many drone attacks by way of Obama, if you do your research. That's why we hate them. Amen. I believe that uh, there's also something else going around about, it's a picture of Obama with a fly on his forehead. Well, it's significant. Why? Because he operates under the power of Beelzebub. Beelzebub means the Lord of the Flies. Amen. And Obama is operating under the power of Satan, who is the Lord of the Flies. So I don't think this is any coincidence, amen, that he got all these pictures with flies all over him. Because he's operating under the power of Satan. What does it say in the book of Revelations? Where does he get his authority, his power from the dragon? That's Satan. Amen. So these are the times that we're living in, and they're very prophetic times, more and more earthquakes. Amen. There was just a 6.8 in Santa Cruz Island. And you see Israel just uh, uh, bombed some trucks in Syria. Amen. The madness in Syria still going on in Damascus, one of the oldest cities in the world, where Bashir al-Assad has his palace. But according to the word of God, uh, uh, Damascus shall become a ruinous heap. Isaiah chapter 17, amen. And we're seeing that right before our eyes. How the Bible is unfolding. And how this wicked antichrist spirit through Islam in other countries. And in America, he's doing it through the sodomite and the lesbian revolution. Amen. Just to weaken America. That's why it's taking place. But if you study the scriptures, all these things are in the word of God. That's why it's important to have a man of God who's a watchman. Yes. Amen. amen. So I thank you for Prophet H. Walker being a watchman. And I'm thankful for soldiers under him, elders in a hierarchy and everyone in their respective places, having the spirit of a watchman, amen, to study, to show ourselves a proof unto God, because this is serious, amen. amen, to get on your knees at night alone when nobody's watching, to read your Bible alone when nobody's watching, to have that personal relationship with your Father in heaven, amen, line up your spirit with his. If you have the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. So it's very important. I thank God that we are in this holiness environment. Be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord, you like. Thank God for all the words from all the elders that transpired. And concerning the Holy Ghost, you definitely got to have the Holy Spirit in these last wicked days to fight the devil. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, the Bible says you are none of his. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to hold steadfast to his word and to do whatever God has called us to do. We can't do it of ourselves. Flesh can't do this. It's the spirit of, of Christ that gives us the strength to do what we got to do. And if you don't have that spirit, that devil is so strong, the enemy, the demonic force is so strong and powerful. If you ain't got that Holy Spirit, you, you'll just back down. Now, case in point, this football player uh, in 49ers named Chris Colifer, during this Super Super Bowl interview, uh, I guess it was something mentioned about Sonomites being playing on the football team, and he stated that there is no Sonomites on our team. If they were, they would have to get out of here with their sweet self. <laughs> but here's the thing: here, watch this. Now, a few, I guess, a few moments later, the LGBT came against him, yeah. and not too long after that. He busts a U-turn, and he apologizes. Now, this is an example of showing if you don't have God's spirit, when the adversary come against you, you, you just going to fall down. That's why it's important to have the Holy Ghost this time. Yeah. It's important to be in the holiness place. Amen. So when we have that spirit of Christ, no matter what come against us, this LGBT movement is so strong and so powerful. This abortion thing is so powerful. They taking over media, taking over America, just taking over everything. They trying to get into these sports and, I mean, everything they can think of. But if you had that strength, no matter what they bring against you, we got the victory at the end. Now, I want to get back to these false preachers. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to pick up around verse 1. And it states, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, 
who privily shall bring indemnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves sweet, swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Now, Paul gave us a similar teaching to this. He said, in the last days that they shall, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, he to himself teaches, having itchy ears. And Jesus also made a similar statement. He said, uh, many false prophets will come in my name and shall deceive many. Now, like I just stated, there's a lot of people that's going after these false preachers because, simply because these leaders just trick them. But it's very important, those that are viewing, to separate from these false preachers because all these preachers are doing is taking you straight to the lake of fire. These TDJs, broke. What's it? Not only you broke, you've been tricked and lied to, and you're on your way to the lake of fire too? That's, that's just very sad. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 16, Paul gives a instruction to the church concerning these false preachers. And it states in chapter 16 of Romans, verse 17, and said, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. He's basically saying these false preachers that's not speaking the same thing, not teaching according to the word of God, not holding on to the traditions of the Amen. apostles, avoid them. In other words, leave them alone. Get away from them. Right. And prophet teaches right. all the time, just about plenty of times on the YouTube. Leave these false churches alone. Leave away yeah. these false preachers. Because all they're going to do is take you straight to the lake of fire. That's why the holiness church is so important. And time is running out. It's time out for playing games. Yeah. It's time to repent and obey the gospel. It's time to be for real. It's time to be pure and hard. It's time to follow after Christ. And you have, and yes, it's a sacrifice. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's not popular. Yes, you will be marked and scorned and made fun of. But the Bible says it's given for a token, right? That means at the end, we're going to reap a great reward. We're going to inherit the kingdom of God. We're going to stand before the judgment seat. And God is saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. If we hold steadfast to the word of God, God gave us a promise. Regardless, like I stated, will come against us. So I thank God that we're in the holiness church in this dispensation of time. Let's continue to stay in the Holiness Church. And those don't wear YouTube, come into this true Holiness Church and follow out the God's Latter day prophet, which is Prophet H. Walker. Be blessed. Amen. Thank all the elders for the comments thus far. We want to go to, to first epistle of John, chapter four, verse one. It said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. And I believe in Second Corinthians two and nine. Paul said, I come to know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. You have to obey the doctrine. There's only one Lord, one faith, yes. and one baptism. Amen. That's why uh, separation is uh, not optional. It's a commandment. He said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing, and then will I be a father unto you and receive you. But you can't stay in the Baptist church. You can't stay in the Lutheran church. You can't stay in the so-called uh, United Church of Christ where they marry two men and two women to each other, where they let unrepentant sodomites and lesbians be pastors, where, where the women wear a pan. We thank God for the women in true light, and I was really touched by that teenage panel, amen, uh, young women, 15, 16, 17 years old, standing up and defending the faith and not ashamed. And, amen, I just wanted to bring this out about a, a young lady named um, Ashanti McClain. She worked at a, um, Burger King in Texas a few years ago, 17-year-old young lady. And when she got hired, she told him, I'm saved, I'm Pentecostal, I don't wear pants, I wear dresses. And she was a cashier, so they agreed to it. A couple of months went by, they ended up firing her, because they tried to make her wear pants. But she could have got discouraged and, and put the pants on and compromised, she didn't. So a few months ago, she sued him, and she ended up winning $25,000 in because you took a stand for the word of God, but you wouldn't compromise her principle. And that's what we have to do today, we cannot compromise the veil cover. We cannot compromise the holiness. We're not going to let uh, sissies come to church and stay a sissy. You come to Jesus one way, but you have to lead another way. Because once the Holy Ghost enter you, you cannot disobey the Word of God and disobey the man of God who's trying to bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And pray my strength for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for the panel. 
And uh, let me kind of just uh, sum up things and again to uh, that young minister, uh, proving again by Scripture that he's in a false church. And uh, let's uh, jump quickly to the veil covering in 1 Corinthians 11, uh, right from verse 1 through 5. Again, a woman must have her head covered. And in the Hebrew and Greek text, the word covered means veiled. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Now there shouldn't be any question concerning the direction that the apostle is going. Amen. He says that you follow me mm -hmm. in all things and keep the ordinance. Ordinance is an instruction, it's a rule Amen. that is set for the church. Now let's jump right into verse 5 and 6. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Now here the apostle says, if a woman comes to church without a veil covering, it's the same as someone would take a, a razor and shave all her hair off. Now again, brothers and sisters, we're talking about an ordinance to the church, a church rule under the dispensation of grace. Now, if there were no need to have rules, and uh, according to the false teachings that's out there, that all you have to do is repeat Romans uh, 10 and 10, uh, all you have to do, uh, well, for instance, I heard a preacher say, well, you can commit fornication, but that still don't mean you ain't saved. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there's so much foolishness out there. When the truth comes, it, it ought to shock you into something, into a reality that there's something wrong and something is not right. right but the Bible is right all the time, and anyone who does not follow the Bible is wrong all the time. Now, again, we're talking about a veil covering. I want to refer you to, again, to uh, covering the head. And this is in Harlem's Illustrated Bible Dictionary. And again, they don't care what church you go to. The only thing they're interested in is a point of biblical history and fact to that history. Now, it says here, uh, covering uh, the head. Paul dealt with the matter of covering the head in worship service. The extended treatment shows that there must have been a subject of considerable interest in Corinth. The Jewish custom was for all women to cover their heads with a veil when they went outside their homes. To appear in public without a veil was a sign of immodesty and lack of virtue. To appear in a worship service without a veil was unthinkable. Now I'm going to read that latter part again. To appear in a worship service without a veil was unthinkable. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now it goes on to say some of the Corinthian uh, uh, women had evidently appeared in worship without a veil. Uh, perhaps they had understood Paul's emphasis on Christian freedom to mean that they no longer had to observe any of the old Jewish customs, including the wearing of a veil. Now, in other words, Paul taught grace, and he taught uh, grace in the context uh, that is not by works, but what Paul was saying, not by works, but by grace are you saved, Amen. he was speaking before you were converted. Not after you were converted, because after you were converted, if the veil covering was not applicable at, at, at the time for the church, then he never would have wrote the epistle to wear a veil covering. Right, right. So again, we see how you have to rightly divide the word of truth, but if you ain't got a teacher teaching you the truth, then how can you rightly divide the truth? Sheep cannot lead themselves. They have to have a shepherd. They have to have someone to guide them. And uh, uh, you ought to be thankful that God has sent me to guide you. Now it says, the effects of such a change in dress style, not wearing the veil, had been uh, disruptive to the worship service and Christian witness in Corinth. This led Paul to state that a woman should cover her head during the worship service. Now again, this is why Paul wrote the epistle. He wrote the epistle because they had misinterpreted grace to think, as these hypocrite preachers are teaching them, where well, you say by grace you don't have to wear no veil covering, you don't have to, uh, women don't have to dress like women, men can wear a dress. Uh, all of this, uh, brothers and sisters, is because of the influence 
of teachers who have no uh, credibility concerning the character of God's word. Yeah. So in order for you to be a teacher of value, you have to hold uh, the credibility of the sanctified word of truth in its highest order. That way, that way you have a decency code. Today, what they've done is eliminated all forms of decency. So therefore, there's no such thing as good and evil. There's no such thing as right and wrong. We are here to try to teach the people there is a difference. And there must be a difference between clean and unclean, between holy and profane. And I thank God again for this panel. And let me get uh, quickly to uh, the uh, makeup. Amen. Now it says here, uh, it calls in, in Holland's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, eye paint. Women painted their eyelids to make their eyes appear larger. Uh, let me read this up. There may also have been some medicinal value for the preventing of the dryness of the eyelids or discouraging disease carrying flies. However, now watch close. The biblical reference often seems to associate the practice of painting the eyes with women of questionable reputation. Amen. Now, if you do your further research, it shows you that, now it says painting the eyes, but it means painting of the face. Yeah. So it, it also gives a scriptural reference. Let's turn to 2 Kings uh, 9.30. And then we're going to uh, 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 cross over to Ezekiel 23. Now in 2 Kings, uh, the ninth chapter, verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Has Zimri peace, who slew his, his, his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. Now, the point being made here, uh, when Je Jezebel was meeting her uh, her uh, her uh, death, amen, God had passed judgment on her and sent a Jehu to uh, fulfill that uh, punishment to her. Uh, the first thing she did was painted her face and fixed her hair because she was going to try to seduce him, but it didn't work, amen. It may have worked on Ahab, but it didn't work on Jehu. So uh, again, we see the negative import of painting the eyes. She painted the eyes because she wanted now to seduce, amen, uh, the uh, man that God has sent to render judgment to her. Amen. Now again, let's get Ezekiel 23 Amen. and uh, jump right in verse 40. 40. And furthermore that ye have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came. For whom thou didst wash thyself, painted thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. Painted your face and put on your jewelry. Now, pick up in verse 48. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land. Thus will I cause sinfulness to cease out of the land. That all women may be taught not, all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. Not to do after your lewdness. Now, part of this lewdness or sinful behavior was putting on of jewelry and painting the face. So again, we see two negative contexts here in uh, 2 Kings 9.30 and in Ezekiel uh chapter 23 from verse 40 through 48. All of this now is in reference to uh, the scriptural context in which Holloman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary is referring to the people who are truly studying so that they may prove themselves a working unto God that needs not to be ashamed. So again, brothers and sisters, we have to fully understand there is a false church Amen. and there is a true church. The true church cannot compromise the Holy Scriptures. So as we wind down, as we conclude this, I say again, as I've said often, any time you go to a church and the sisterhood is not veiled, Amen. does not have their head covered, that is a false church. Any time you go to a church where you find facial makeup, facial paint on a woman's face, uh, nowadays on a man's face, uh, that is a false church. So again, when you know the truth, the truth is to set the captive free. And once you are free, you are no longer a captive to Satan and his devices. Now again, brothers and sisters, we have to also understand uh, Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall uh, enter the kingdom of heaven, but they that do the will of the Father. Now the will of the Father is found in the doctrine. 
And Paul says it's the doctrine that saves us. Now, part of the doctrine or instructions is not to wear facial paint, not to wear jewelry, and a woman must have her veil covering when entering a church. Not only entering a church, but in a public gathering, she must have her head covered. Now, this separates the true church from the false church. Again, Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. Now, are you in a false church or are you in the true light? Amen. By their fruit, you shall know them. Thank the Lord for this panel. Amen. And thank the Lord for uh, the prophet's band. Amen. Amen. We had a good time. Yeah. We learned more of the truth. Yeah. Amen. Well, I, I say to YouTube, you, you keep watching. Amen. Amen. And you, you have the truth. Now, what you do with it is up to you. Again, we thank the Lord for the uh, commitments that true church can only go forward because of people who believe in uh, following their leader yes. and making a sacrifice, more so even this last dispensation of time, yes. and not thinking about self. It's not about self. Yes. Everything we do is for the kingdom of God. Yes. Everything is for God's holy kingdom. Amen. So I thank God for this envelope. Amen. Uh, Donald Hudson, $490. Amen. <laughs> Elder Ricky Smith, $300. Amen. Uh, Dr. Ali, $700. <laughs> Very heavy envelope from uh, Evangelist Elder Wagner, $1,000. This is why we are able to accomplish Amen. what we have accomplished and uh, how we are going to be able to get that church in Charlotte, Amen. how we're going to be able to get that church in Atlanta, Georgia, the capital of the Sodomite Lesbian Coalition, Atlanta, Georgia. We're coming there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we'll get prepared. We are coming there. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're coming with the sword of truth. And God never lost a battle. Yeah. Well, praise God. Amen. Some more envelopes coming in. <laughs> Amen. Another heavy envelope. Daughter Kelly, $500. <laughs> praise God. Daughter Kelly again, $90. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The more you give, the more God gets happy. Yeah. Daughter Kelly again, $250. <laughs> Love Talk Radio.